Hey guys, so we got something kind of interesting today. I got a train package unit that has a call for two stage cooling, but we're only getting one stage of cooling. Stage number two is running, stage number one is not running. So I've already gone through some of the diagnostic checks and I found the stage one system is completely flat. There's no refrigerant left in it. Um, really simple, I just traced voltage until I found the low pressure switch was open. And then of course, that's when I decided to test my gauges and I found the system was empty. So I'm gonna pressurize the system right now and get out my leak detector, maybe put about a half pound of R410 in the system as a tracer gas so I can find the leak. And then uh, I'll show you what I find in just a little bit. All right guys, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but we found the leak. It looks like it's cracked right on our discharge side of the compressor here. Let's see if I can get it to, uh, it's cracked right at the elbow, maybe about a quarter inch, half inch long crack. You can kind of see it as I spray it with bubbles. Let's see if I can get it a little closer here. Yeah, see right there we got nice big old crack. Now, given the, the length of that crack, kind of where it's at, I think I'm just going to cut that elbow right out and replace it with a new elbow just to make sure we got a nice permanent fix on there. Let's see if we can get a different angle at it. I don't know, this is a first for me. I haven't seen too many elbows that are cracked in that particular manner. So, All right, I'm going to get this copper cleaned up, get that elbow cut out of there. I'm going to get that dryer cut out, a new one fitted up, and then I'll, I'll bring you back on the adventure when I'm all set. Hey guys, real quick, I just wanted to share a tip. When you're cleaning copper, for those that are maybe new to the, the field, uh, when you're cleaning copper, I learned this a hard way, but the best way to clean that copper is clean it before you cut it. It's just easier. Easier to clean it when all the pipes are still connected rather than after you cut it, you're trying to hold one end of copper and, and sand it at the same time, and you end up cutting your fingers off or whatever else happens, so keep that in mind. All right guys, we're about to braze this dryer in place. Got my nitrogen hooked up for a low, steady nitrogen flow. Set this right here. Let's see if I can do this without burning a hole or anything. Also, you new guys, if you notice that arrow, you always want the arrow on the dryer to be pointing towards your metering device. If you do it any other way, you're gonna run into some troubles. Torches down, double check with the mirror. It's 
probably not picking it up on camera, but right in the back of this, there's a little bit of a divot. So we're gonna hit it with the torch one more time. If I get my torch to light, Double check that again. Not too bad. Let's see if we can get a close up. Not too bad of a joint right there. Check this bottom side. Not too shabby. All right, next up is our elbow. All right, guys. So. Now you're sitting inside of the unit, so I'm about to braise this elbow in place. So hang on for the ride. Pretty good. Now we're gonna cool it off and inspect it with a little mirror here in a second. Sorry guys, I know I'm blocking your view, but I'm gonna get this thing cooled off as fast as I can. How does that look from your angle? I don't see any divots. Got a nice, nice round cap on there. It's not too shabby at all, I'll tell you what. Alright guys, let's see if I can see you here. We're going to get this thing on a vacuum now. Get this right out of here. So Now I'm sure you guys have noticed by now my awesome hat. Yeah, it's fantastic. I got it off of Amazon. Now, if you've ever had a suntan in the shape of a baseball cap with the little with the little cutout in the back and everything or the front depending on how you wear it. Once that happens to you and you gotta walk around looking stupid, you'll probably buy a hat like this. That's what I did. That's why I bought this. All right, let me get this vacuum going. Hey guys. So real quick, before I jump the gun and start pulling a vacuum on here, I just wanted to uh, take a second and show you that we are doing a pressure test, a decay test. I have it to, uh, I don't know, my camera's gonna pick it up right now because it's so bright outside here, but I have about 200 pounds of pressure in the system. Let's see if we can kind of get a little bit of an angle there. I got about 212 pounds of pressure in the system. It's been holding for a good 15, 20 minutes. I hang these bad boys back up here. Um, I also took a quick minute and I rechecked, sprayed my joints with bubbles again just to make absolutely sure I don't have any sort of leaks in there. Um, I also went through my other other joints just to make sure I checked my micro channel. Uh, there was there was a lot of oil sprayed around here, so there wasn't just one spot where I could see a little bit of oil and then determine that the leak was there. So it's 
kind of just all over the place. Now, as we're waiting for this decay test, I wanted to take you around to these condensing coils. Again, I'm not sure how much you can see on camera because it's just so bright out on this roof. But if you can see that condensing coil, there's just a thick layer of cotton on that thing. So once I get her under a vacuum, I already brought a hose up here, so I'm going to stretch that hose out and wash this thing off. Why not? Make sure it runs really good for them. You'll notice I got my jug of 410 up on top there. It's getting nice and warm, building up lots of pressure, so I can charge it up in about two seconds flat. All right. All right, guys. As you can tell, we're down to about 640 microns. Got our vacuum going pretty good. Um, I'm going to wait till we get down well below 500 and then we'll valve everything off and do an actual decay test. In the meantime though, I'm going to close this disconnect so I don't spray everything with water, which obviously wouldn't be too cool. Then, clean this dirty coil. Now this coil is a micro-channel coil, all aluminum, and it's not really full of grease or anything, so I'm just going to use water on it. They do make aluminum safe coil cleaner, but like I said, it's not really gunky. It's just got a blanket of crap on it. And we're just gonna wash it right off. See, it's looking better already. There we go. Not sure how much of this camera's picking up because it's so bright up here I can't even see my phone. So I apologize if you can't see nothing. Mmm, yummy. Look at all that garbage coming off of there. Now also, because this is a microchannel coil, you can't split it, it's not multi-layered. As far as I know, they don't make multi-layered microchannel coils yet. Okay, I could be wrong, I'm not really a super tech, I just, I just play one on TV. So I'm not real sure if they make one yet, I can't imagine they do. I assume if you had an aluminum microchannel coil and you tried to split it, it would probably just snap right in half. and and explode into a ball of flames. Hey, look how much better that's looking already. Alright guys, I'm sure watching me do this is blowing your mind, so I'm going to shut this off and finish cleaning this. Hey guys, so we're down to about 320 microns, and I know I got my micron gauge connected to my manifold set, but what I do is I keep my low side blocked off at the manifold set, and once I pull down from both sides, once I get under about 500 microns, I'll close off the low side. I really just pull through the high side. I know I'm working against restrictions like the TXV, you know, even though it's going to be open, um, you know, and through my hoses, I don't have my I don't have my core removal tools on right now. But, yeah, so what I do is I'll block off this, which would make this the lowest part of the system. That's the furthest point from my vacuum pump at this time. So, all right, we're going to charge it up and get back at it. All right, guys, we're just about all set here. I got uh, the charge weight in, 4 pounds, 7 ounces of R410. 
I got it running in two-stage cooling right now. See if my camera will pick up my gauges here. Got about 121 PSI on the low side. About 19 degrees superheat. Pretty good. 40 degree evaporator. A 240 on the on the high side. Let's see our supply temperature is about 54. Not really pulling out any moisture yet, but we're getting there. Now what I always do on these is I'll always, always, always just take take quick amp draws. I know roughly what they should be, so 6.9, that's not too terrible. What's this one at? 8.2, not bad. Check our indoor blower. 4.1, not bad, not bad. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. We'll see you on the next one.